Hello everybody! I'm posting a little bit late today given the fact that yesterday I've had the most difficult day of my life and not necessarily chess-wise but rather school-wise. I uh, am a teaching assistant in a sociology class and I had a lot of grading to do. It was the first time I had to grade something and um, I did stay till almost 5 a.m. to finish grading. So I have a lot of, uh, not that I didn't have uh, before, but now I have much more respect for professors for spending a lot of time grading assignments and making sure that they are giving enough feedback so that the students can always improve. And that is exactly the same thing that I'm trying to do with these videos and when I'm teaching my own students. And so I've been thinking what would be nice to to uh, prepare for today. And so um, another idea that I had was um, to kind of get inspired from something that I do in my own life. And my fiance and I really enjoy watching detective movies or reading detective stories. And I think um, that detective stories are, are always about uncracking a mystery, right? And so I see the connection between the detective stories and chess, um, and specifically chess studies, because as uh, you see a position, you have to uncrack the solution. You don't know what's going to happen. And you have to always be on the look for the opponent's, for your opponent's threat, for your own threat, you know. And, um, so for today, I've decided to share with you a really nice study by Kasparian, who is one of the most famous, um, study composers. And here is the position. It is white to move and win. And of course, I, Hope most of you will pause the video here, be aware of the position, set it on a board, and try to solve it. For those of you who need a hint, be sure to check out the title of this video. That should be a really good of a hint. Uh, that's the best that you can get. And with that said, I hope you have paused the video by now if you wanted to pause it. If not, I will start discussing this position and uh, see the solution together. Okay, so let's start with the evaluation. It doesn't matter if we're seeing a position, a game, a study, a problem. We have to try to figure out what's going on on the board. You can't just, oh my god, I need to look at the king. Let me try to find a way to mate the king. No, it's more complicated than that. It is very important to do the evaluation of the position so that in case there's a specific move that you might want to make, you need to make sure that your opponent doesn't have something better to respond to your move and then uh, you could be in trouble. So if we look at this position, we realize that black has a very simple threat, queen f2 checkmate. So you certainly need to be on the look for that. Now, um, white evaluation-wise, right, before I should have made the evaluation first, white has a pawn up and the bishop pair, so of course they would try to find a way to win this game. So, um, why is it so complicated? Why can't white just make a simple move like queen takes b7, take the knight, and um, win the game? Well, there is something that black has to um, check, of course, but unfortunately queen takes b7 does not work because black responds with the only possible move. Then we take back. And here we have not to forget that this bishop is also hanging. So g takes f1, queen. White is forced to capture back. And in this position, black has a very strong move, which will uh, bring the game to a draw, g2. And here after king takes g2, king takes b7, this is going to be a theoret this is basically a theoretical draw because black is going to be able to bring their king 
on the king side to h7 most likely and then they will just move the bishop and it will be impossible for white to make uh, to put black into its bank in any way besides if the bishops get traded the end game is a very simple draw so that is the reason why white cannot make that queen takes b7 move and that leads us back to the start aside from queen f2 we forgot to mention g takes f1 promotion possibly also taking in h2 at some point some bishop d4 as well so there are a lot of check moves um also a checkmate very clear in f2 that black can make and the position will certainly not finish the way we want to so we have to really think this position through and find a way to protect that but also you know be sure not to give away um, um, material we are trying to win this position could we just capture in g2 here and say you know um, uh, there, there's no more queen f2 checkmate uh, I can just capture the pawn unfortunately not because once again there are various mates here for black one of them is queen c1 check uh, you would put the bishop back to f1 now queen e3 check you have to come king h1 here comes another check and now you can go king g1 but then you'll be mated okay and you can of course play bishop g2 as well but then check okay we're gonna do everything very simple queen takes f1 checkmate so natural moves are not good in this position besides this is a study so every single piece that we see on the board has a specific purpose they are not just there to be there it was a composed very well thought position once again Kasparian was one of the uh, the best um, study composers and so every single piece has a role if we would be able to just play bishop takes g2 and hope to win the game certainly um, it wouldn't have been a position created so let's get started white also has some threats against black's king right this king only has the knight to protect it and uh, there's a pawn in a6 ready to promote so white has to try to utilize its pieces to work together in order to be able to uh, find a way to checkmate black if possible of course uh, we have to start with bishop c5 in that case this is the correct move in the position after bishop c5 check black has a couple of answers in fact three right capturing the bishop king a8 and king b8 let's get started with the most the worst move that black has just to get it out of the way king a8 why is this the worst because it's going to be mate in three moves simply capturing the knight with check the king has to go to b8 now bishop d6 check the king has to go to a7 and now b8 queen checkmate because our bishop in f1 let's not forget controls a6 so with king a8 we're done let's consider knight takes e5 this seems like an interesting move um, that black has here you know you just take the bishop no mates but after knight takes e5 we are happy with the trade because if we are trading pieces uh, very fast then um, we should be able to win with our remaining h pawns so now because by now i'm sure you either have solved it or you have certainly realized what the title was so of course the adventure of, of uh, the second pass pawn is going to be the h1 so if we trade enough pieces with white we should be able to win with the h pawn or like we saw earlier it could be a draw so we need to make sure we're checking everything now here after queen takes c5 check black should respond queen b6 because otherwise if um, if you go king um, a8 for example we simply take in g2 with check king b8 and a7 mate or of course you can put the queen in b7 but it's just going to um, 
give you a couple more moves to play. So, and if you go king b8 in this position, once again, there's going to be a7, the king comes to b7, and now bishop takes g2, um, after which we can promote and win. So, queen b6 is the correct answer for black, and now here we see how the second passed pawn wins the game. Capture, king takes, and now king takes g2. And because white has two double, uh, two pawns on the h-file, they're going to be able to win the game because all the one of them gets traded. There are two. There's one more which is going to be able to win the game. Why is that? Because, well, the, bish the pawns are very far away. And so black will have to stay with one of their pieces to, to sacrifice on one of the pawns. And then the other piece should... Um, be able to go to keep the other one. Now, black pieces are placed in a wrong way. It would have been uh, a draw if black were able to have their king in h8, and then the bishop would stop that a pawn, because in that case we know that it is um, the h pawn, so it's the opposite corner bishop, so black will be able to just sacrifice their bishop on this a pawn, and then with their king stay in h8, simple draw. But unfortunately, their king is way too far, and by the time um, they try to get there, it will be too late. For example, if black goes here, king d4, to be able to bring the bishop to stop the pawn, and then very, very, very fast get on this side of the board, white already starts pushing h4. So they are going to bring their pawn um, close to... Um, to actually the promotion, and they will be able to promote. Now, the square, I used to say the square, and then a lot of my students told me that it's called the box in English. So I'm going to say the box from now on. The box of this pawn is the one that um, I highlighted with arrows, um, and so this king cannot enter this box, therefore they will be too late to the time that this pawn will promote. So what white will do is they'll bring the pawn close to the promotion, and if you bring your king, I'm going to show in a second what's going to happen. Let's say the king is coming, h7, and now as you can see the king is too far away, and because the bishop has to control both a7 and h8, we can sacrifice one of the pawns, and then promote with the other one. Either one is fine, Black, the bishop will have to capture, if not, white will promote, and now anyways white will promote on this side. So, once again, if black would just stay there with the king and hope that the bishop will just keep this pawn, basically white will push the pawn till h7, bring their king to g8, be sure to win that bishop, after which they will bring their king back and uh, win with the a pawn, which is of the same corner color uh, as the bishop. So, quite simple and beautiful, I would say. So, knight c5 does not work. Now, let's get back to the main line, king b8. What to do after king b8? It seems like black has escaped in this position. If you push, for example, um, uh, once again, capturing in b7 would lead to something similar that we saw earlier. It's going to end in a draw. So if we push a7, would this, uh, would this move work? Unfortunately, once again, it wouldn't work for white because after king a8, there are no more checks. So the only way that white can try to win this is once again by capturing in b7. And it's pretty much... And now king, bishop takes g2, right? Oh, sorry, actually, I made a mistake. If, Of course, if the queen captures, bishop takes g2, and uh, white will be able to win because we've seen this earlier. This is even better. So, I'm sorry, black captures with the king here. Okay? And here, the same idea, bishop takes g2, and um, black goes king c7, and we can't promote just yet here in a queen because we are going to get mated. Bishop d4 check. 
queen takes d4 check if you come to f1 checkmate and if you come to h1 it's the same thing just an extra move so after king c7 uh, white can try to take in g3 so that they are not mated their a7 pawn is protected and they can promote the next move but the problem here is queen c1 check king has to go to h2 and uh, the queen captures in c5 and when white promotes to a queen here um, the correct move here for black should be bishop e5 i believe and this should be a draw because it's going to be very hard for white to continue progressing this position and um, if black manages to trade queens and bring their king um, in front of the pawns they should be able to sacrifice um, uh, the bishop for, for one of the pawns. Specifically, they would want on the g pawn to sacrifice it, right? Because the bishop and is of the wrong car, um, corner promotion square. So it should be quite simple. There shouldn't be many um, difficulties for black to hold this position to a draw. And the best thing that they could do is even, you know, play next move queen d6 for example and then capture in g3 because whenever white is going to pro uh, protect this pawn they are going to sacrifice and then make sure that their king enters in front of the pawn and uh, make a draw okay so a7 doesn't work so we have to find another good move here the correct move in this position is queen f4 check now we're trying to get the queen to stop the mate in f2 but also create some threats here because uh, where does what does the king do in this position once again black has a couple of options they can go king a8 they can go king c8 i'm just showing a lot of bad moves for black but there are po possibilities bishop e5 or queen e5 Let's start with king a8 to get rid of it quite fast. We're simply taking the knight with check. And if you take back, bishop takes g2. Very simple win. And if you take back with the king, there's simply queen e4 check. Another check. Eventually, I think there's actually a mate. Uh, if the king goes to, to c8, bishop a6 check. And now, mate. And okay. If it goes to c6, anyways, we have a piece up. We really shouldn't worry that much about mating, but I'm sure that there is a mate once again here. King b7, bishop a6 check. The king has to go to a8 and check, and queen takes b7 mate. Or if you go here, mate. Okay. So, king a8 is just very silly. Same goes for king c8. We're simply capturing the knight. And um, here we have a bishop up, and we should be able to win this quite simply. After king d8, for example, bishop takes g2. There are no more checks that black can give, and um, white has a bishop up. So the last two choices are bishop e5 or queen e5. After bishop e5, there's going to be a big trouble for black, because after a7 we want to promote. You can't go in the corner, obviously, because of the mate on the last rank. So you have to come king c7. Now we've got another check. Bishop takes g2. And when you take this bishop... White has to give a lot of checks because otherwise they'll be mate on the last rank. They can't promote just yet. They just need to find the right time to uh, trade the queens and then promote. And here it is because after queen takes d5 check, the king has to go somewhere on the b b file and now uh, we are capturing in b7 and they were trading the queens and here white promotes and wins the game so once again uh, this bishop e5 move doesn't work so in this position black has to go queen e5 okay gosh we've given a couple of checks but who how to win this position well it's important to trade the queens because that queen was very annoying creating some mating threats, right? So, let's trade. Bishop takes. A7 check. Black is forced to go to A8. You cannot afford to 
um, to allow the promotion. And here, bishop takes g2. And uh, it seems like white is simply winning. Why are we still going on the line? Well, black does have an idea of getting stalemated. Because now their king is in, doesn't have any moves. The knight is pinned, so cannot move. So if they can get rid of their pawn and bishop, uh, they should be able to draw. It would be great, but let's see how we do this. So bishop d4, we, they have to get rid of the bishop first, because if they take here in this position, g takes h2, simply king h1, and now the bishop doesn't have any checks, and um, they have to just stay somewhere on the diagonal, and then this pawn is going to go, and uh, white is going to be able to win this. So they have to give this check, very nice. Bishop takes. Um, now, g takes h2, and be aware, do not capture the pawn or go king h1, because you are going to allow them to get the stalemate position. So king f1 is the beautiful move. I hope you were able to calculate until here. Black promotes h1 queen. And here it's important to find the right move for white to be able to win the game. Of course, you cannot take the queen because it's stalemate. So you have to go bishop g. Well, not you have to. This is the best move that is going to actually win the game. Bishop g1. And as you notice, black's queen is trapped. So this pawn really, uh, the title of this I think is brilliant. And I have to thank my fiancé for, for it. Uh, it was his idea. It's really the adventure of the second pass pawn. Because not only is that H pawn going to win the game, but he's also a great adventure because this queen is trapped in H1. So here, no matter where black moves the queen, it's not going to be a stalemate anymore. For example, if we have queen takes h3, simply bishop takes h3 and the knight can move. Right, the knight can move somewhere. And then uh, do not make the mistake of playing bishop g2 check and then taking the knight because <laughs> you'll end up making a draw. But now you can just move the king, bring the king in that direction and you should be able um, to win the game. Let's say if black just plays king b7, this is going to be ver a very simple win after check. So their only moves are going to be knight b7, knight somewhere, knight b7, knight somewhere. And the king is simply advancing. Let's say they stay in the same spot. Uh, actually, now um, I think I don't need to bring my king. I can probably give you check. Knight goes to b7. Now I can advance with my king this way. It's very tricky. Uh, you move your knight. Attacking your knight. Let's say you go back. Now we go king c6. The knight has to go somewhere. King c7 check. You can put it back. And bishop takes checkmate. So, very beautiful. And uh, so, queen takes h3 is a no-no. What else? Uh, queen takes g2. How about this one? After queen takes g2, simply king takes g2. And um, black would have to be able to bring their knight and sacrifice it for the pawn. Um, so that the end game is a draw. But unfortunately, they don't manage to do that. Because let's say they come... We can uh, play h4. The knight can play knight f7 to keep the pawn. That's all right. We advance. And the king is going to come chase the knight away. Just be sure not to keep your king and pawn uh, to put it on a square where it's going to be check pawn. But other than that, everything should be fine. And white will be able to win this. Queen h2. Um, is going to be losing once again because very important bishop takes b7 check first now we take the queen and certainly black is not in the box of this pawn and even if they were white would still be winning because the bishop is of the same color as the h8 corner so the only move left is uh, queen takes g1 and here we capture back the king captures in a7, and now we are capturing that knight. 
And finally, we have remained with our adventurous pawn, second pass pawn, because we already had that A pawn that we gave away. And here it comes. And once again, black is not in the box of this pawn, so white is winning. I really hope you enjoyed my story and this study, and most of you have solved it, hopefully. If not, I hope you enjoyed seeing the solution. I think it's a brilliant study, and it certainly goes with the detective story. I wish you a wonderful day, and I'm going to see you tomorrow, like usually. Bye.